Canada's union leaders are no doubt reaching for a stiff glass of eggnog after last night's vote in the House of Commons. The Conservatives have delivered a lump of coal to them before the Christmas break. Last night, a new private member's bill was passed to amend the Income Tax Act and force unions to make their finances and expenditures public. The bill would force labour bosses to disclose their salaries, bonuses and how much is allocated to political activities. Well, the man who sponsored the bill is a B.C. Conservative. His name is Russ Hebert, and Mr. Hebert joins us now live from our studio in the nation's capital. Mr. Hebert, nice to see you. Good to see you too, Chris. I guess Christmas has arrived early for you and some of your colleagues with the passage uh, of your private member's bill. Uh, for those at home who haven't heard your point of view, um, why did you think this was an important one to table? Well, Canadian uh, labour organizations receive preferential tax treatment. And uh, I believe that there's a corresponding responsibility that they disclose, that they be accountable and transparent for the roughly $500 million in tax revenue that uh, taxpayers forego. Uh, charities have had to disclose uh, since 1977 and for the same reason. And so I believe it's time that Canadian labor organizations have the same obligation. But as you know, there are some professional associations and some professional organizations which don't have to um, adhere to such standards. And that's part of the reason why some of your own colleagues, uh, Mr. Rathgaber, voted against your bill. Uh, it's true, and you know the principle would apply to other institutions as well. But I think you have to recognize that labor organizations are unique with their compulsory dues, with the fact that they do both uh, political and organizing activities. They are unique as a Canadian institution, unlike other associations. I would have to assume, but it's only an assumption, um, that efforts were made to get these five dissenting colleagues of yours on the conservative benches uh, to get on board with the bill. Were there overtures made to them that addressed their concerns? Absolutely. I mean, I was, I was talking with stakeholders, with colleagues, uh, you know, with a variety of uh, interest groups throughout the course of the last year and a half to address their concerns. You'll notice that the, uh, even the, the dissenting MPs voted in favor of the amendments, which actually make it a better bill. They've addressed the privacy concerns that the opposition has been talking about at length. Uh, so they re removed the need for uh, pensions and trusts to disclose uh, beneficiaries' uh, information. They reduced the cost of the bill as well and so you would have seen my colleagues last night supporting those amendments that make it a better bill uh, but at the end of the day it was a private members bill uh, there was a free vote and I respect the, the choices of my colleagues well those amendments to the bill uh, weren't enough and not surprisingly to satisfy uh, NDP leader and opposition leader Thomas Mulcair who said quote this is an attempt by the conservatives to break down the system of representation and protection of workers rights in this country um, and it will of course be defeated by the courts but in the meantime it will require a lot of uh, bureaucracy he is calling this in an interview with the Sun News Network which can be viewed uh, on this network tonight on David Aiken's program at 6 p.m. Eastern patently illegal so what did you do in the construction of the bill to address any concerns about the constitutionality well, first of all, we had constitutional experts advise us in the drafting of the legislation. But I think this is just another smear by the opposition. Keep in mind, Krista, that uh, a number of Canadian labor organizations already disclose this information, just not to a Canadian source. They do so to the United States Department of Labor. And any Canadian can look that information up on the U.S. Department of Labor website, as I have. So all this bill does is it provides a level playing field for, for labor organizations across the country and puts us more in line with other G8 partners. Australia, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Ireland, they, and the United States, of course. They all have this kind of labor, uh, public disclosure of labor uh, finances. But it's still, and in the U.S., they've had it since 1959. But if it's, that may be the case elsewhere, but it still has to survive a test in the courts if it gets that far. Are you confident that it will? Because Thomas Mulcair's kind of political theory here is that um, it doesn't really matter to you or any of the conservatives supportive of this bill whether or not it survives a test of the courts. Uh, what this is really about is satiating the, what he termed the reform base. Yeah, and again, I, I think it's exaggeration and... Uh attack on their part. I mean, let's keep in mind that 83% of Canadians polled want this information. And the number is even higher for unionized workers. 86% of, of unionized labor in this country wants the disclosure that this bill will, will require. 
So there's a large public support for it, and it's ironic that the NDP, which often claims to be, you know, the spokespeople for workers in this country, are so offside with these members that want to know where the four to five billion dollars that are collected every year actually goes. They want to know how much the executives are being paid, and they want there to be some accountability. I've heard from many of them over the last year and a half. Mr. Hebert, we thank you for your time uh, this afternoon, and we wish you and your family and all of your colleagues the very best this holiday season. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you. B.C. Conservative MP Russ Hebert joining us now live from our Bureau in the nation's capital. Let's stay in Ottawa because that's where interim Liberal...